Hello and welcome to Set It Up at Mapping Key Gaming. My name is Emmanuel and today we are setting up Disney Sidekicks. Disney Sidekicks is a game for ages 8 and up, plays 2 to 4 players, and plays approximately 40 minutes. Time to kick it into hero mode. It's a Spin Master game from by creator Eric M. Ling. So, let's just uh, take the top off here and see what we have on the inside to set it up. Real important here, the instructions on here are not the most up-to-date. The most up-to-date are available on their website. I will have it linked below. Uh, it'll be in the description. So, this is the instruction book. Now, the way how I'm going to structure this, I'm going to do it a little bit different from the instruction book because I think they, they do things kind of out of order. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you about the heroes and then we will um, set up the game board. So in a basic game, there's going to be a minimum right of two, of two people playing. What, what you would do is select your characters so let's say we picked uh, uh, Lumiere here and uh, Gaston. Okay, so I have my two my two characters like that, right? Then the next thing that I would do is in here you're gonna find the the player mats. Okay, here we've got uh, uh, Flora, Fauna, Meriwether, uh, Timon and Pumbaa, Tinkerbell. Okay, so you're gonna go through. You're gonna find your hero. Oh, and your villain. Okay, each each one's gonna have their own mat. Okay, the villain side is going to have special instructions on how to set him up. Um, I usually wait until the very end to do that. On the back side of the hero card, it just has, you know, some art. Okay, so you, so now that you have both of the hero mats, okay, let's do him. Let's do, um, you know what, here, let's do uh, Abu and Jafar also. Because we'll, we'll be setting up a two-player game like that. Where were they? Okay, yeah, there's Jafar and Abu. Okay, so those will go back in the box after we're done. We're going to we're going to need their cards now. Each each uh, person is going to be getting one of these reference cards. It's double sided. It tells you the the turn order, what happens, and then the win conditions when you roll the die. So they call this an action card in the in the manual it is not labeled in the rulebook yeah it's not labeled on uh, online in the new rulebook they are so so just don't get confused when you see something and it says about the action card this is what they're talking about so each player gets one of those and they do they give you five uh, in the box Okay, next, okay, not these blue cards, okay, I'll talk about these blue cards a little bit later, but these cards here, okay, that you see has, this one here is for Jafar, this has like the carpet outline, and then, and this purple color, these are all going to be Jafar's cards, okay, so you'll need those, and then this right here with the gold, uh, that's uh, going to be Gaston's cards okay and then okay here for Lumiere he kind of has the uh, the inverse instead of having black he has like this light yellow okay those are going to be Lumiere's cards and then these are Abu's cards so his you know same thing it's going they're going to have that same solid co uh, color uh, but the top part there you, you see it's a it's like a light super light like lavender color okay and then those are the hero colors and each hero is like that so for um, for the the three fairies right it's this um, kind of aqua color with a, with a, a super light tint on top Timon and Pumbaa same same thing with with kind of like a um, what is that like a sunset color and then Tinkerbell with the green and then if you see, if you look at Captain Hook, same thing except he's got a uh, black at the, at the top. And those are his cards. 
there's that teal color for Maleficent, and then Scar has that same like uh, sunset color. Okay, so those, that's what you're gonna need for that. And then, yeah, we're gonna talk about those. We'll talk about those cards later. Right now, we're just setting up everything you need for the heroes that are going that are going to be played. And when, and then once we get that out of the way, we'll uh, we'll set up the board and everything for the heroes. Okay. Now in the each sidekick is going to have a hero. Here is uh, Bell and Aladdin. Okay, and these are the tokens representing them. Uh, they're going to be in the castle. So you need one of those, right? And then each character, um, each villain, has their own type of play. They are pretty uh, asymmetrical, so Gaston is going to take these Gaston faces. And then uh, for Abu and Jafar, you're going to need uh, Yago and the uh, Genie. So I believe that is everything you need. Yeah, that's everything you're going to need. For the characters so now that you have that just just take those and put them um, just push them all off to the side okay and just uh, open up the board now there are two sides to the board if you look right up here in the corner it's going to tell you two to three player or uh, four player on this particular board, I like to work from the center out because there's going to be a lot of small pieces. So the very first thing I like to do is grab a little tray. Now in the insert, there are spots for all of these things, but what I did instead was I, I put them in little baggies because it's the I, I pinched some of them to take them out and then like they popped, they made a mess all over the place. So just FYI. Just take everything, um, put them in little baggies, and you can throw them inside the little cup. Just makes it a whole lot easier. Um, and this, these are going to be the, the little villagers. Those are the uh, multicolored um, silhouettes of people. Uh, in this baggie here, I did put the locks, the tokens with the slashes on them. Uh, those are, are like attack tokens and then there's these tokens with a shield with a white bar across you'll see them later um, those represent the guards and then this is the bag um, of stars they're just they're just blue stars oh and I threw the little heart tokens um, and then those will come into play a little bit later so I just take all those and I just uh, I leave them in the baggies for right now and just throw them all together in there and then now it's time for the castle. Okay, super easy to put this thing together. It has um, a little section right here, and that's going to slide. If you look at the tower on the back side, there's a little section where, and it's just going to slide right into it. You don't have to force it or anything, it just goes. And, and it's not going to be like super flush or anything. You know, it just, just kind of like fits in there. Oh yeah, and I forgot the, the die. Throw the die into the... Into the a little tray. And there, there are five towers. And I will be doing a gameplay of this because I because the way how the rules are, it, it, it does seem a little um, confusing. So I'm going to do a gameplay to help uh, make sense of some of these rules. Everything just kind of slides right in together. It holds, and then you kind of see the outline. Okay, and then just place it in the center. Now, each hero. Oh, oops, wrong one. Yeah, let me just grab. So I just grab the heroes that are going to be locked away, and I just toss them in the center. Okay. That's, that's pretty much all of it. Uh, they're going to sit there the whole game until you rescue them, and then they're going to sit on your board. <laughs> they really they don't do anything. So 
depending on the number of heroes that you have in, you know, depending on the number of players, you're going to take these lock tokens. Okay, and you're going to put two of them, just, just put them around the castle so you can kind of see. And they're pretty much markers just letting you know that, that the heroes are still inside and that you need to rescue them to complete for, for the win condition of the game. The next thing is you're going to need the bridges. Okay. The, the little bridges. Now the number of bridges, I believe changes between a three and a four player game. And what you, what you do is you can tell on the map here, <clears throat> uh, let me just try to, there we go. On the map here, you can see the spots here where they, where they go across. And then what, during the game, the, vi the villains destroy the bridges. So you just remove them and then you can kind of see like the wreckage. So you're going to put the bridges all around the board. There's going to be six of them on a uh, on a uh, two to three player map. Okay, now here at each uh, section. Okay, this is the 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 inner ring. If you if you read the book, they refer to this as the inner ring, and then the outer ring is the ring outside, uh, furthest away from the castle. Now, at each spot. Uh, where the bridge connects to the castle, you're going to put one guard token, and that's going to be one of these one of these with the little with the shield. Okay. They're gonna go out. And that's it for the guard tokens for right now. Next, you're going to put out the villagers. Okay, it doesn't matter the colors. You just take one villager and you're going to put them at every spot that has some kind of uh, uh, iconography. So there's this little cactus that's sitting next to these spots here. So they're going to get one villager piece. And then you just go all around the board to wherever the you see one of these little um, these little markers and they whoops, they just delineate where where you're going to be putting villagers And I keep them in a separate baggie just so that it's easier for me to just uh, take them out and then put them away after. Okay, and the final thing that you're going to be doing um, on this board is placing your sidekick and your villain. So if you see right here, it says P2. So that would be like for player two. And then on this side here, it has a P1 for player one. So that's where you would put your, your sidekick. And then if you look, uh, and, and the sidekicks are going to start on the outer ring and then on the inner ring you're going to see a V1 so that would be for villain 1 which would be Gaston in this case and so if I place Abu in the P2 section there's going to be a V2 section where Jafar is going to start Okay. now at this point here you're essentially done setting up the board except one final step and that is to look at the back of the villain of the of the villain mat and it's going to tell you here how to set up for their specific requirements uh, for Gaston it's these these little charm tokens his face which each person is going to be getting one of those at the start of the game and then he himself is going to be carrying two and then he's going to be getting one of the tokens with the slashes on it and that's going to be like a villain attack token okay and i just put that on his little board there and then 
take Jafar and do the same thing here. Uh, Yago is going to be with Abu there, and then the genie is going to be with Jafar. And then just, it says flip it over and then give him one of the attack tokens. Board portion of the game is essentially 100% set up. Now I'm going to cut to the characters themselves. So what, what we have here are the cards. Abu and uh, Lumiere have the Gaston tokens. And then Gaston has, the, has one token for each character. So there's, there's, a, there's a total of four of these uh, charm tokens. But the other ones, you just throw them back in the box. And, and they both, Gaston and Jafar, both have these uh, villain attack tokens. So the next thing to do is take these stars out. These star tokens are going to be placed over each heart of the villain. So each time that you attack him and damage him, you'll you'll be getting one of these um, these uh, little star tokens, and so that's that's going to reveal, I guess, you know, just help you keep track, I guess, how much life he has. I don't know. I think there there is a much cleaner way of doing this, but the, this is the way how it says in the rule book. The reason is, is because, you know, you, you end up with six of these little stars on each villain where each uh, sidekick gets one heart here and it start, starts at the end of the track and then as he gets damaged it just it moves down and, and up as he recovers health. So, and each character gets one gets one star okay so the boards are, are essentially done now each sidekick has has seven cards what you're gonna do is you're gonna shuffle those up and then you're going to draw three okay and then Abu's going to do the same thing, and then these are these are going to be the the moves that you're going to try to uh, the the abilities you're you're going to unlock as you play the game. So. Just that out of the way there. Okay. Okay, so now the heroes are, the, the heroes for setup are 100% complete. The last thing that you're going to do now is make the, uh, the villain deck. Okay, so what you do is you take the Gaston cards and the Jafar cards and you, you're going to shuffle them together. And, oh, I forgot. There are these blue cards here. <clears throat> okay, and what you're looking for, there's two of them are going to be the castle. Okay, those go into um, the villain deck for every game. Okay, the next, you're going to find four cards with the exclamation point, four cards with the shield, and then four cards with the slash. Okay. The the four cards with the exclamation point is villagers in peril. The shield is going to be guards on patrol, and the um, the slashes are are the villains attack. Now, this is how you make the game harder. So the uh, you add them by groups. Okay, it's not by the artwork. the The artwork is just taken from the different movies. Um, but what you do is, if you want to make it one skill level harder, you add in one group. And if you want to make it a little bit harder, you put two, and then the, mo the highest difficulty is to add all three groups. Okay, other than that, these just get put on the side. So you take those um, together. 
the two and uh, and the two villains that you have you just shuffle them up and then that makes the villain deck and now you're hundred percent complete you're ready to play Disney sidekicks I did want to make a couple notes it does say to use the, the cup that is inside the insert instead of doing that I use a uh, dice tray and I just keep all the, the pieces in the baggies just just to keep things easier and then the other thing when I take everything apart um, after the game you know I separate everything out you know these these two cards here you know go back in the deck and then you know you uh, I separate the the villains right and then what I in the box they are separated by they, they have all the villains together and then all the sidekicks in in you know to, to make things faster uh, I just actually keep the the heroes and the villains are the sidekicks and the villains together so that way when you know if I'm looking for Lumiere Gaston is with him I don't have to go searching through all the cards to find them. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And let me know, what's your favorite Disney movie? Yeah, personally, I like The Lion King. The Genie is actually my favorite sidekick. So until next time, my name is Emmanuel. This has been Mapping Key Gaming. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up uh, if you like our content. And if you want to see more like this, I will be doing a gameplay video for this game. So give us a uh, subscribe. Until the next time, it's time to kick it into hero mode. Man, it's, I, I don't like that tagline.